Hi, my name is Johan Falk. I'm a math teacher in Sweden. I used to be a Drupal developer, but now I do math teaching, but I still use Drupal and I use it partly to help my students to learn math. Uh, I'm going to talk about a module called Mechanical Tutor, which I'm uh, maintaining. It's a way to well, yeah, let people uh, or students do math stuff online on a Drupal site. And I'm going to show you a bit of how to code for Mechanical Tutor, show you some of the API and frameworks that are available and how it works. So here's a, uh, a question provided by Mechanical Tutor. And you might have watched uh, another video. This is a field that sits on an entity. And when that entity is displayed, this field is rendered as a form. And you can like answer, submit answer here and get responses and stuff. And um, so I'm going to show you, let's see here. This is the code. And I'm just going to show you here. I'm going to output the uh, question data here. Let's reload here. Uh, here is the question object, and it has. Well, let's actually. Para, no, parameters get. Let's do that. Okay, I want to have the parameters here. So each question has a, uh, some parameters used to build the question. These are stored in an array, and in this case, we have two parameters uh, called A and B, and they have values 2 and 6, and you might figure out how these are used to build the question. Um, and this is kind of easy for a question like this. Let's edit this and change the question to something more, um, more tricky. We have this one, interpret linear equation from text here. We have a more tricky question, like Alice is building a fence, the poles are this high and they are 4.5 meters apart, write an equation that relates the number of poles with the total length of the fence. And you're allowed to pick your own um, variables for length and uh, number of poles, and then you should write an equation. Uh, the uh, parameters used to build this question is much larger. Well, they are more and they are more complex. We have like uh, some numbers here. We have uh, a name called N1 in this case, that's Alice. We have a distractor number. This is 1.2 meters high. And this is stored because if we reload the page, we want to have exactly the same question. And thus, we need some parameters stored here somewhere. Uh, and then we have some labels here that are used as well. Um, Yes. Okay, so these are some stuff going on, on in the background when the question is built. These are stored in the session variable uh, to allow each user to have their own sets of questions. Uh, I'm thinking of moving that to the database, but then it might be some problems for anonymous users. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there is also the session API you can use. Okay, uh, so I want to show you how you could write your own um, questions and I'm going to show you in tutor example dot, uh, dot module. Let's start here. If you want to do that, uh, you need to in, uh, implement hook tutor questions to tell uh, the tutor module about your questions. And these are declared uh, in a standard uh, way in Drupal, like return an array of uh, these are identifiers, and then you can specify some information, but these just follow the de default pattern, so we have an empty array as value. And we're going to have a closer look at the tutor example addition here. And let's actually make this a bit larger. Uh, all of this is pretty well documented in the readme. Uh, down here somewhere, how to create new scripted questions. Like here's a walkthrough of the uh, example edition module where we add one digit numbers. But hey, this is a start. You declare we have a question. Uh, this is done using C tools plugins. So there are two different ways of doing that. And there are details you can read up on later. To the example edition. And this is then by default found in a file called the same with the same name but with dot ink so example tutor edition dot ink let's have a look at that here 
Okay, and here's a class that is used to describe this um, question. Uh, it has a name that builds on the ID for the uh, uh, for the question, but it's camel case and no underscores. Uh, should always extend tutor question or some sub class to tutor question. And right now, I think I've only declared the uh, well, the the necessary uh, methods that you should override. I think technically you could skip one of these, but you probably don't want to. Nevertheless. Uh, first one, label get uh, defines the the uh, name of this uh, um, question. We have parameters generate these and generate all these tricky parameters. In this case, only two uh, two random numbers between one and nine. Let's actually change this to to the adding one digit numbers here. There. So here are two random numbers and it returns the object here. You store these uh, parameters in, in the object um, uh, property parameters and then you return the object so we can change stuff uh, when calling this uh, object or calling this method. Uh, build question is sent a form, this form here, and this form is then populated with new stuff where you present the question. You could also uh, alter this box for answering. It's a text field by default, and you could alter that to select boxes and whatever you want to have. Um, again, you should return the question object to allow changing. Um, extract answer. When you submit here, or someone submits, the answer is extracted from from this um, well from the form, and in this case, uh, you just have the standard text field. So this is actually done by by the parent here if you want to. Uh, but I included this here, uh, so you can still see that we extract something from the form, and we store it in the property called answer on this object, and then we return the object as usual to allow chaining. And if you have a lot of uh, complex stuff in the answer, then you have a complex extraction method, uh, method here. And that's it. Finally, we have a function called evaluate answer, uh, which is called to evaluate the submitter answer against these parameters. Uh, and then you have, well, whatever um, checks you want to make, and you in this method, you should populate the property called response, and this uh, property should have, must have, uh, an object of the uh, type tu tutor question response, which contains some kind of code or number uh, determining if the answer was right or wrong, or uh, even invalid or almost right, and and things like that. Uh, it could also be let's see, incomplete. Yeah, well, so you populate uh, the response like that and uh, eventually you return the question object. And that's kind of it. Oops. Uh, so you can build more complex questions if you want to. I mean, this is kind of basic. Um, but this is the, the way of doing it. If you want to have more documentation on this, you can check out the tutor question object in uh, tutor.include, and you'll get like all the documentation for, for the uh, properties in this object, and also the methods. Let's see, I have a construct here. Let's see. One of the stuff that we didn't change here, I think, here, after answer, when the um, when a correct answer is uh, uh, submitted, we reset the, t and the parameters for this, uh, um, for this uh, question object. So it, a new, new set of parameters can be generated. Uh, I think this is uh, quite enough. I'll see you in another screencast at another day. Goodbye.